Welcome to this podcast is making me thirsty. The number one destination for Seinfeld fans is episode 56. Our guest today is a former actress. You know her from As the World Turns, Melrose Place, Star Trek, Deep Space Nine, Kirby Enthusiasm. And of course, her biggest role in our minds was as Jerry's girlfriend, Rachel Goldstein, in three of the greatest Seinfeld episodes of all time, The Raincoats, The Hamptons, and The Opposite. Uh, nowadays, she's retired from acting and currently runs one of the highest ranked yoga studios in the country. Please welcome Melanie Smith. Thank you, Melanie. Hi. By the way, I sold the yoga center. I now... Oh, whoa. Really? Now, but that's okay. Yeah. Oh, very cool. <laughs> but you still coach yoga just as a personal? No, I actually, I coach, I coach CEOs and oh. entrepreneurs and solopreneurs and yeah, that's what I do. I coach people and... Basically, transformation and success. Very cool. Yeah. All right. I have Namaste. To talk to you. I may have to talk to you. Thank <laughs> yeah, you. I'm right there for you, honey. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, Melody. Yeah, of course. Uh, this is this is such a great treat because you know, Tony just mentioned some of the iconic episodes. They happen to be season five for us was probably the pinnacle of Seinfeld. So take us back, 1994. Um, you finished up your time on As the World Turns. You're doing some spots on Melrose, et cetera. And then the call came for Seinfeld for Rachel Goodstein, Goldstein. Sorry. So how'd that come about? Did you have to try out? Was there a reading? Take us back. It was actually very funny. Um, I was, I forget what show I was doing at the time. I can't remember if I was on the show or if I was filming a pilot. But I was on the other side of the hill, you know, because they're at MTM. They were at MTM. So I was on the other side of the hill, I'm probably somewhere on Sunset, and my agents called me and they said, there's been this role they've been trying to cast on Seinfeld, and they need you to go over and meet with Jerry. And I said, it's five o'clock. I am not going over the hill at five o'clock. Like, it's not going to happen. And they said, what are you talking about? I said, I'm, I'm not going to do it. Like, I'm not even going to try to get up. Do you, have you ever been in LA? Do you know the traffic? Over the <laughs> yeah, forget it. Like... Right, it's like someone said to you, you need to go through the Lincoln Tunnel, right? Right, and five o'clock, yeah, yeah. be there in 20 minutes. <laughs> and there's a truck stuck, right? So you'd be like, I'm not, I'm not doing it. So um, they, they gave me an extra hour. I went over and, uh, and I met with everybody. I thought I was just going to go in and out. And I ran in, I met Jerry, Larry was there, everybody was there. And uh, Jerry and I read a scene together. And I said, okay, thanks. And I wanted to get out of there. So I did the traffic on the other side. And so I was leaving. And Jerry had seen the name of my corporation. And it's called, all of my corporation is all about great foods. And he ran after me and said, why did you name your company all about great foods? And I said, because Oscar Wilde said, a great food is nothing but a lemon that had a chance and took it. And cool. he started laughing. And I said, nice to meet you. I got to go. I got to get over the hill. And I got it. And then I did the first episode, uh, which was a double episode. Yes, hour long. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they had a lot of sets, behind sets. It wasn't all live. Some of it was pre-filmed. And I got on set and everybody had already been filming and active. And I, I walked on set and nobody introduced me to anybody. And everybody kept coming up and telling me what to, where to go. And I said, okay, we got to stop. Could everybody just please introduce themselves? <laughs> so everybody came up and introduced themselves to me and it was like a really sweet entrance and it was like then I kind of knew what was going on and then when I left after that episode Jerry called me and said if you write if we write for you will you stay oh wow so it wasn't until after you actually filmed the first one that you knew you were coming back for the other two yeah I, it was just a, it was just that double episode and then Jerry called and said I you know we want to write for you we want you to stay and I actually would have stayed longer but then I got Deep Space Nine. Oh, oh wow! So, so was that, go ahead, Omar. So, so that that was an opportunity. I know the the final episode was the finale of season five, the opposite. The opposite and yeah. obviously, Jerry broke up with you. So there was potential that you were going to continue in season six. Well, I have no idea. I just know I got Deep Space and I moved on. And then that was it. And then, yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. you were. I th I top. I mean, we pretty much know the show pretty well. I'm pretty sure you're the only, if not one of the only, Jerry's girlfriends. I'm the only. 
who doesn't <laughs> who doesn't break up with him, who who he doesn't break up with because of some type of he didn't find anything wrong with you, right? It was you ended it with him, and he, it was in the opposite episode. He was like, "Oh, it's fine. Even Steven, it'll you know we'll be back together again. Like, you know everything's fine." Like there was no the fact that you were went back so many times, you know, three episodes, and then the breakup was the way it was. It makes sense that they might have wanted you back for another episode. And I was Jewish. Yeah, so you played Rachel Goldson, yeah. But, so let's let's talk about so so the Raincoats was an hour long. It had both sets of parents, it had Jack Klompis, it had Judge Rhino playing the great close talker. I mean it was a huge episode. Um it sounds like you were a little overwhelmed getting thrown into the fire there. Um so, you know, can you, anything you remember about the set other than that kind of first overwhelmingness uh, of just being in, involved and, and watching, you know, how they how they worked on the set on that first episode of the Raincoats? Well, it's funny, you know, I wasn't, I actually wasn't overwhelmed. I was um, really inspired by all the energy. Got it. You know, we kind of had to make sense of it because they were so used to, they're, they were a consummate team. Like, I worked on a lot of shows, guys, a lot of shows for a lot of years. Mm. There's not a team like Seinfeld, truly. I mean, they worked like clockwork. They had the most unbelievable minds from producers to writers to the talent um everybody was really extraordinary it was also the best craft service <laughs> oh wow it was like you could have a bagel of cream cheese and lox you could have sushi you could have m ms it was a dream come true so it was and everybody was delightful it really was a great great cast and the, it was also the best rap party i'd ever been to we've been hearing that that's what we heard from uh who else told us that how was it dd dd pfeiffer told us that or adita no it was or, um or, lloyd braun peter lloyd, uh, that's right peter yeah from yeah season five yeah peter Call, callahan Callahan. Well, um it would have been the same rap party yes he would have been yeah. there with you yeah yeah he said it was unbelievable it was fabulous you got any stories for us he wouldn't really give us too many stories he just said it was a lot of fun <laughs> but the thing that I loved the most was it was it was at the planetarium. Right. Yes, he said that. Yeah, yeah. So they showed all the clips on the ceiling. Oh, cool! Very and cool. It was so fantastic. I was sitting. Peter and I, Peter Melman and I, sat side by side, and we. Oh my god! And then Jerry got up and did a whole off the cuff routine. It was it was just so much fun, you know. I mean, come on, when you're surrounded by those minds, right? You know what I mean. You're not going to have a lot of time. Especially, right. like I said, the food's good. So, yeah, your second episode of the Hamptons that was written by by Melman, Peter Melman, and and Leifer, Carol Leifer. So the the Hamptons was I would I, I guess I'll ask you what what was your favorite one of the three episodes you were on? I would think it might be the Hamptons because that's it's our one of our favorite episodes, and it also you know there's a lot going on in that one. But you know I'm asking you maybe what was your which one did you enjoy the most of the three? Well, pro I would say the Hamptons. You yeah. know, Schindler's List was a blast. Right, right. Um, but I was kind of just getting to know everybody. And and so by the end of that, and and Dee Dee was in Schindler's List with me, right? No, Dee Dee, Dee, Dee was in the opposite with you. She was, uh, yeah, she became so George's Dee girlfriend. A doll. Dee Dee's a doll, by the way. She's such a lovely girl. Um, she, we were both girls back then. Uh, but no, I'd say the Hamptons was my favorite. Also because <laughs> that scene with Kramer. <laughs> that was a lot of fun to do because it was physical. The, the, you're talking about the kitchen scene? Yeah. Da, 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 yeah, when, I watch. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's sitting there smoking a cigar. And yeah, you could tell, like, I felt like you had such chemistry with, with all the characters, even in that negative sense. Like, I hate to say it, but like, you were really bitchy to George, and he in, a came great, off, in a good way, though. In a great in a good way, way. Like he he came off as a, the annoying friend. I get it, but um, and then him coming in, do you guys have any gum? Like you, you were so standoffish to him because I don't think you didn't meet him in the in the raincoats episode, right? It was just you and Jerry in that, and right, yeah, fun. I didn't, I didn't meet him, right? Um, so yeah, how did you approach that? Like, like I know Melman wrote it, but like, what kind of direction were you given from? the writers and or the directors on how to, you know, treat George or your personality there? I mean, you know, I think on the show, they hire you because they trust your instincts. Mm. You know, I don't think that, I think 
the direction I got was written in the script. You know, it, it's clearly written that George is an annoyance, right? <laughs> um, and in the script, though, you know, that moment when I see George after the pool, it wasn't written like that. I did that in dress rehearsal, and then Larry said, "Can, can you can you do that again?" And oh, I interesting. Said, yeah, absolutely. Because I, I, I was joking and I like looked at him and I was like, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. And But that's not really the way it was written in the script. And so that's the thing about Seinfeld. They, they, they grab onto things that happen in the moment. I think when it came to, and by the way, uh, Jason Alexander is such a sweet man and he's got such a beautiful relationship with his wife, you know. Um, but, I, you know, it, it's so easy to like him in person that to play that with him was actually kind of fun. Right. And, and it, <laughs> you know, him coming in and I'm looking for gum and, you know, whatever. And I just, yeah, I'd make a decision. And it's in the script. I don't, she, she doesn't like me, you know, that kind of feeling. So, yeah. Right. I, I mean, that's. Directed me. I think it was just a script. That is the, well, you know, obviously one of the most iconic scenes in, in television history, to be honest with you. If, definitely in Seinfeld history, but in television history. And I was in the pool, and, and just, that's incredible that you kind of, you know, that's you. You added that to it. You know, it wasn't even in the script. That's amazing, because that's, that's classic television right there. Yeah, um, and, it, and it really was. I mean, I've it's gotten so much, um, I don't know, it's gotten so much fanfare. You know, it's kind of funny that, that it just came out of that sort of chemistry or alchemy. Um, and is, is it true, you know, George says, you know, women, they're much worse. They talk about these things. Like, do women talk about that? Like, from a girl's perspective, would, if, if that happened to you, would you go tell Jane in real life? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, talk about, <laughs> we talk about everything. And we talk about everything about ourselves, too. Right, right, right. right. You guys would never talk about, like, about yourselves to each other, you know. We talk about we talk about everything, you know. We're sisters. Yeah, we had uh, you know, like we said, Mel and Peter wrote that episode. We had him on, um, you know, talk about that and everything. And it was it was interesting. It was he gave us some good insights. Um, but uh, yeah, Peter is truly funny. I mean, he he has the driest. I don't know if you know who Stephen Wright is, but he's yeah, yeah, that same kind of humor. For know? sure, he ma so he mentioned he mentioned the Allman Brothers concert because I brought I brought it up. I said because he wrote I his with him. yes, I know that <laughs> he <laughs> he wrote in his book that he was a big Allman Brothers fan. So I asked him about it, and he happened to mention that he went to a show with you. So I was curious, you know, you remember anything about the concert? You know, what they yeah, play? I'm a big right. Allman Brothers fan. He said, "What you think?" I said, "That was the best four-hour song I've ever heard." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's true. You, go, you hear two songs in a in a two-hour set. I literally was like, "Was there more than one song?" Because I <laughs> I couldn't make a distinction. Um, but hanging with Peter was always fun. He's a terrific guy. You know, he's generous and he's kind and he's funny. Uh, and uh, I remember that though, and I I still remember whenever the Alma Brothers come up, or I think once after that, someone said, "Do you want to go to an Alma Brothers concert?" I was like, "No, I'm good." <laughs> <laughs> Not because of the company, but right, right. The fact that, like I said, that's a four-hour song in my eyes. <laughs> sure. Now we 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 also heard, and we and we hear this from a, a few guests that I believe Jerry asked you out a few times, right, uh, yes. during the show. I know he's a stand-up class guy, but it's just funny how. Um, We've heard that from a few um, of the female Death stars. Yeah, yeah, I'm convinced that's why you wrote me in. <laughs> well, what's well, what's funny is you, you you mentioned the audition, and it's it's kind of similar to the audition of uh, I think you're friends with her, Mariska Hargitay. Yeah, she's a good friend of mine. Yeah. Oh, all right. So the episode she was in in season four, she's actually trying out for the the pilot, and Jerry steps in and goes, "I got this," and he and he does the audition with her. So it's pretty funny. It it just sounds eerily familiar to you coming in and he does the reading with you. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 But no, he he did. He he asked me. I don't know. And then I I just said kept saying no, which I think was surprising. Because <laughs> it, you also said you never really watched the show, right? Prior to you, I never watched. It. Maybe I caught an episode or something, but I was not. I really didn't watch it much. I really couldn't tell you that many Seinfeld episodes, believe it or not. I can tell you. Well, 
We we ranked all of them before we started having guests on our podcast, and the three you were on, the Hamptons eight opposite nine, and Raincoats twenty five. So they're all in the top twenty five, two in the top ten. So if you haven't seen any of them, you've been in the three of the best of all time. So you should be. Well, you know. I'm not one, two, and three. <laughs> well, that's the episodes. If you were to rank Jerry's girlfriends, then there's a different story. Ah, okay. You'd, you'd be Good. closer I'll to the top. Flowers, candy, whatever you need. Just get, just get <laughs> rid of the top three. Numero uno. But you know what's also interesting, Melanie, is um, and it's, it's funny, you uh, you were Morales on uh, Melrose Place and then Goldstein yeah. on Seinfeld, but there is a, there's a there's like a Melrose connection here. Like there's there's been a lot of overlap with Melrose. I guess maybe that's just an LA thing, and those are two prime shows in kind of the mid nineties, right? Well, I also think in Hollywood. You know, I make a joke and I always say, if you were Jerry's girlfriend, you're sort of like, you're like the Jewish Bond girl, you know, like, like there's a, there's a thing in Hollywood when you have a presence or a look, you know, and, and it works uh, with the public, people try to capture that all the time. And I know for myself with Aaron, I did a lot of Aaron spelling work. Um, and to, I, I would say I'm Aaron's version of ethnic because <laughs> I don't have blue eyes, right? <laughs> right, it's all and, blonde and blue. Yeah, blonde right? and blue so eyes. Like everybody had blonde hair, red hair, blue eyes. But if you didn't have blue eyes, you could be the ethnic one. And I do have Portuguese in my in my blood. So the, the networks let him use me as a Hispanic character. So I was always Hispanic on the, on, on spelling shows on. Um, uh, Melrose I was, and then I did uh, Green Dolphin Street um, and everything that Aaron hired me for. I think in in 90210, I was Alyssa Gardner, so there was no ethnic uh, distinction. But um, but as far, you know, I played, I could play characters that were Jewish, which I am, and I could have, I could also look a little town. My hair, you know, is was darker then. I don't know what happened. It just is growing in life. <laughs> um, but, you know, I could play Italian. I could play, you know, Hispanic. I could play, you know, any of that. So I don't know. It it it, it worked for me. Um, but I didn't know a lot of people crossed over from spelling to Seinfeld because I didn't, I don't watch. No. Yeah, there's a few like um, March Across. Um, right. They actually had an episode about Melrose Place that, uh, in season six, where Jerry had to do a lie detector test because he said he didn't watch Melrose Place, he ended up he watches it. Yeah, it was uh, a whole thing. so there's a whole thing. It's like, yeah, it's it's pretty funny. You know, Billy and Allison. And I remember you worked with Billy. I remember that from yeah, uh, yeah, 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 from my days watching. And then um, it's funny you also participated in Curb. So maybe you could just touch on that a little bit. Kind of the differences of. Working with you were season one of Curb too. Yeah, a couple of years I, later. That was the finale. Um, yeah. Well, that was great because because Larry and, and Bob Bob Whitey, who's a good friend, who I, I love Bob. Um, they called me and asked me if I would do the the last episode. They were going to write this character for me, and I said, "Oh, I can't. It's my son's birthday party, and I'm going back to Scranton, Pennsylvania. My sister's going to have a party." Huh. And she rented a tent, and they're like, "Are you kidding me? We'll pay for the tent. Tell her to move it a week. You're like we're doing it." And so, I um, I got on to the set and realized the whole thing was improv, right? right? And Bob had kind of told me that, you know, this is not scripted. You know, we have, and I thought there would be some, and I'd studied improv, but but I actually never had more fun doing anything in my life. It was a blast, especially doing improv with Larry. Because Larry, I, I, I don't even understand how many, uh, how many pistons that guy has in his brain because just it's there, it's just right there. It's just if something is funny, he makes it funnier, right? If something's absurd, he makes it more absurd. You know, he just, I don't, I don't understand how it works, but he's got that thing where everything is, uh, he finds the greatest moment in it, you know, and it was a blast. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's like you said, and it was also the first season. So not, not, it wasn't the big entity it became and the, 
unscriptedness wasn't really as known. Like you said, like I can see that going in. Like, is it really like this? And then you're there. You're like, oh, shit, it really is like this. Well, I remember when they shot the original episode, because Bob had called me and said that he was working on it with Larry. And I said, that's so exciting. And then I went to the screening. Uh, and then there were, I don't know, maybe there were 10 of us. And we all had to vote on the name. Uh, and oh, wow. For, almost all of us said Kirby Enthusiasm. It was such a great name. Um, they gave you options? Yeah, there was like a list. There Do you remember any of the other ones by any chance? I don't. And they were pretty forgettable, I think. Oh, right, right. So Kirby stuck out to everyone. It was like, and it was so... It's so clearly defined, Larry. Right. <laughs> you right. Know? <laughs> There's Larry is the least enthusiastic person <laughs> ever made, you know? That's funny, yeah. He, he comes across as not caring about anything, yeah. even the most exciting things. He's just, ah. but he's nervous about everything. Right. So you was know? he... Was he like that on the set of Seinfeld too? Like, what what were some of the differences or similarities, or did he, or is he pretty much the same guy? He's that. That's that's Larry. That's him. Yeah, I remember once he he bought this chair, like a it's like it looked like a cane, and it, it could be a chair or something like that. And he showed it to me, like, man, look what I got. And I was like, how much you pay for that? And it was a lot. And then I go, like, why didn't you just get a beach chair? It's just as light. And he just looked at me, and he's like. Why did you say that? Like, now you could never use the chair. Like, I totally ruined the experience for him. <laughs> <laughs> that was Larry. Everything was, you know. And then I remember I, I he met with me to do Sour Grapes, too. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. It's movie. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I mean, yeah, it's so your career. I mean, you had you, you we talked about the beginning with with you know a lot of the the as a world turns and um you know through to I'm always interested in people who kind of shift their careers and I noticed you know looks like you've shifted a few times now from acting to yoga and now you're saying you know the the, the coaching of the CEOs and leadership. Um, you know, I want to give you a chance maybe to touch on that a little bit as far as like your thought processes on on when you make those decisions to kind of shift gears and is it something you've always thought about or is there a catalyst for it? I don't know. I'm always yeah, curious to. I mean, um, my career was really going great and I had just been offered a new series, but I was not, I was, I was doing a series on Lifetime with my best girlfriend, Nancy McKeon. It was a show called um, The Division. And uh, I couldn't be away from my son. It just was that simple. I felt like, I was at this place in my life where I, I wasn't a, a good mother or a good actress. Like I, if I was on set, I was thinking about my son. If I was with my son, I was thinking about my script. And so I finally made a decision that I was going to leave the business. And a bunch of people called me and said, what do we have to do to get you to stay? And I said, this isn't, this isn't about not wanting to be creative or, or work or, but I can't leave my son like this anymore. I can't tell him I'm going to be home for dinner and then call him at nine and hear him cry that I'm not there, you know? So um, they, they made an offer for a new series and I really had to think about it. And I said, no. And I bought a house in Pennsylvania and I came here and I realized soon after that, that I struggled with being, sort of sedentary or just like stay at home mom or whatever. So as my son was entering preschool, I decided to open a business. And the funny thing is when I opened the business, I opened this yoga wellness center and it was huge. I mean, it was enormous. I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't <laughs> know anybody here. I'm like, just throw all your, am I, oh, I almost said a curse word. Sorry. No, you can I'm, curse. I'm like, I, I just throw all your money into this business and what the hell? And I thought like, nobody here knows me and I haven't done any press or anything for it. And it was funny, I got some editorial press because a lot of my well-known friends were coming in for the opening, but it, it was so sad, a policeman was killed. And so all of my editorial press went out the window. So I had no press about the opening. And so I was sitting in my studio panicking and I said, okay, you got to give me a sign, God, if I meant to just not open the doors, let me know. But if I'm meant to keep going, you got to give me something good. And my cell phone rang. And it was Oprah's producer. Oh, and wow. she said, listen, we're doing a Seinfeld reunion show. And Oprah wants to know if she can use your clip. 
And I said, sure, but she's got to let people know I'm opening a yoga studio. <laughs> Very cool. Well, what what was what was the clip? I'm just curious. Was it, I, was in, no, the, the, I was in the pool. I was in the pool. No, I was in the pool. That, that's, and, it lives and on. So the next day, the major networks called me, and they all did a special on my opening, and like a piece, about five to ten minute piece on my opening. And and I was I was standing room only, and we opened the profits, and the rest is history. That's Melanie, see see how it all comes back to Seinfeld, <laughs> <laughs> right? That's amazing. I mean, from Oprah's well, producer. Building the house in Naples. I'm building my pool now out there. And, and all these pool people are like, oh, my God, you're Rachel. And I went, yeah. Really? Like, well, for free. And I'll go like, I was in the pool. Yeah, I was in the pool. There you go. It's perfect. <laughs> building a pool. I was in the pool. So, <laughs> so it's funny. You, you had such a long, like a really long career as uh, Emily Stewart, right? On in, you, That was filmed in New York, As the World Turns. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, with some other connections, I think uh, Marissa Tomei was on that, another Seinfeld alum, and then obviously Seinfeld only three episodes, and then Deep Space Nine. Yet you probably you probably pocket yourself into those three, right? If you had like three I cultish, think fans. Have, I think if well, what I would say is this because what I always said was really for me incredible with my career was I was in three kind of genres mm. that have the most dedicated fan base I've ever seen. Right. So you have World Turns, which is the daytime crowd, which is, fan they're fantastic. I, I, I love the fans of all these shows. So you have World Turns, that's the daytime crowd. Um, and you know, when I was on the show, our cast was out of this world. I mean, yeah, Marissa and uh, Meg Ryan just left. She was my sister. Um, Julianne Moore, Ming Na Wen, Parker Posey, Wow, yeah. Kipner, I mean, the list goes on. And from there, you have Deep Space Nine. Now, that bunch is, they're not only committed, but they have such a, a unified, like, system of belief that when I did one, I did the 50th reunion, you know, and I had to speak oh, wow. to like 6,000 people. It was like there were 50,000 people there. And the night before, now no one had ever seen me without my makeup, really, right? Mm. So I'd sit in the restaurants the two nights before I had to make my appearances, and I would listen to all of them. And it was in like the details they know from the very birth of Star Trek as we ever knew it, from the very original all the way to that present day, they were like, well, I think in this year was actually when that character, like they had everything in detail. They knew everything. So you have that client, that, that, you know, following. And then you have, well, Seinfeld, like they're, like Seinfeld is almost eternal. That's what we're you hoping. <laughs> well, <laughs> the whole is. podcast is dedicated to it. So we're hoping we can get, uh, it's, yeah, it lives on forever. And then you have the Melrose all, the whole Melrose pod, though, like if you did a Melrose show and you were part of the Melrose genre, which was a genre, right? Um, that was it. So those were sort of my four pockets, I would say. Yeah. And I did a lot of other things, but those were my four pockets, I would say. Yeah. I, uh, as a fan, I dip my toes in all of them except Star Trek. Although, I'll admittedly, I was a young and a restless guy. I don't, Victor Newman, the whole thing. It's funny, yeah, but as the world turns was on after and in Young and Arrestless was during my lunch hour. So no joke, four guys were like outdoor workers. That's what we watched. It was crazy. But anyway. Like highway department? Yeah. <laughs> you guys um, were watching Young and the Restless and As the World Turns you went to Highway Department? I didn't know that. Yeah, but Tony Sorry, didn't side note. Meet all the athletes. Yes. Made their athletes were some of our biggest fans. Because they're home during the day, yeah. Yeah, a lot of the sense. a lot of the basketball teams and they they wanted to meet me. That makes sense. And that's how I met <laughs> one of my boyfriends, New Jersey Devil, Kenny Danico. We were dating. Oh wow. We, you did Kenny Danico? Kenny Danico? Yeah. That was and, the, like prime when they won the cup those years, like night uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wow. And, and Matt, because he saw me on World Turns and he was just convinced I was meant to be his girlfriend. And he, wow. he made friends with John Hensley so that he would bring him to the set so he could meet me. Uh and then we, we dated for years, yeah. 
Oh, wow. That's wow. another Seinfeld connection, the Devils. The New Jersey Devils episode. Kenny Danico. It's awesome. Was there a Devils episode? Yeah, there was a whole yeah. Devils episode where uh, Putty paints his face. and Yeah, yeah. I should start watching. <laughs> Listen, it's, it's coming back to Netflix. And it's funny, you've, uh, well, I don't know how young your son is anymore, but we He's ask 20, a lot. 21? 21. He's still young. He so like, he graduates Saturday from college. Where? Where does he go? Smeal College of Business, Penn State, Maine. Nice. Oh, very cool. Well, congratulations. That's, yeah, that's awesome. awesome. But more importantly, is he a Seinfeld fan? Because we've asked a lot, like D.D. Pfeiffer said, oh, my kids never watch anything I'm in, da-da-da. They've never heard of yeah, Seinfeld. Yeah, like, the same thing, I think. But Seinfeld's I, now, it's coming to Netflix. I'm just curious if it's going to get a, you know, a resurgence and if, if young people like your son are watching. He's now watching. I mean, he's watched my episodes. Mm -hmm. um, but I think he watched my episodes because of his frat brothers, not because of me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we watched some of my episodes, um, but I could see him and those kids bringing it back. I think it'll come back. You know, it's the fu funny's funny. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's my. That's how I think of it too. Funny's and funny, it, and it's timeless. And it's funny. And we've talked. We've talked to a couple. Com I remember we talked to this one comedian um, a few months ago, and his first episode ever that he watched live was The Hamptons, like. The perfect episode to just launch your like Seinfeld fandom. So like, yeah, I mean those scenes the opposite I, too could be. I mean all right, yeah. the opposite, yeah. But I mean the Hamptons, I think, really just sticks out. And like, you just had an incredible role in that with the, the chemistry with Kramer, the sitting at the table with Jane, and obviously everything with George. It's just, I mean, you should be very proud. That's all I have to say. Yeah, I. You know, it's funny. I. I had, I had, becoming an actress was an accident for me. I actually, that wasn't really what I had intended to do. And, and so the jobs that I got in the career I had, I am very proud of. Uh, and I worked really hard to get good at acting. You know, I took it really seriously. When I did the Hamptons episode, and when I say to you, like, it was really funny working with, with Michael Kramer, somebody sent me an outtake a couple weeks ago. And which I forgot, you know, like it's a long time. It's been a long time. Right, right. <laughs> and they sent me an outtake. And it was so funny to see how committed Michael and I were to doing that scene where I'm, you know, where he's trying to stop me from eating the lobster. <laughs> and then the whole thing that kind of reverberated through the Jewish community was interesting too. You know, my father was so proud because he got letters from um, the Jewish exponent that there was finally a pretty woman representing the <laughs> Oh, interesting. Like, really? And exactly. it made up for the Schindler's List stuff, probably, which they probably weren't happy about, I'm, I'm guessing, maybe, you, you know? So then, <laughs> they thought it was funny. Okay, you know? they got they the got joke. The good, good. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't all for yeah. yeah, that culturally, it, it hit a nerve. It struck a nerve, right? And, and there were a lot of, I noticed... Even recently, when things will pop up, um, you know, pe people will ask, "Is she Jewish?" Because my last name is Smith, right. and where we were, my family was came from Eastern Europe into Manchester, England, and they changed our name from Steinhardt to Smith. So, you know, it was it's interesting that 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 was part of it too. You know. What were you gonna say, Chris? You gonna say that? For some reason, this was. I was thinking about you eating those eggs. Were you actually eating those uh those scrambled eggs, George? Man, <laughs> those cold, disgusting, yeah, eggs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But it's funny, also the, the whole the Jewish connection, and you were, because you were probably what around twenty eight, thirty years old in real life when you filmed that, um, and you were living at home. Yeah. You were living 90, at home with your father. It was ninety one. Ninety four. Ninety four. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> And so, how many years ago was that? I can't I don't do know, that. 20 something. So, give or take. I'm 58 now, so I, I don't know what. Yeah, I think you're yeah, like 28 then. 28 or 30, yeah. But, you yeah, were, you, but your character was living at home, and George had that great line like, you're, you're dating a girl who's living at home, like, like he was. Like, maybe that's the cool thing, you know? So, just so many moments. Like, so, you, you were on the set for. An hour show, a thirty-minute show, and then obviously the the finale, of season five. Were there any scenes that got cut that that didn't make it that were 
funny that you thought you could share from the uh, what you mean, that, that I was in or that, that yeah. generally yeah. maybe that you saw that you just yeah no I don't remember anything being cut uh, from that show I've had that I've had like I did more episodes on Melrose Place since and than than I was I you saw me in because so do things ha do have to get cut sometimes but is it is it true you were supposed to go for the Amanda role on Melrose? I was. I was supposed to be the Amanda role. And that's Heather Locklear for those, right? That that's I Heather Locklear's role. I was something else, and they and then they gave it to Heather, who's such a great and nice human being. Um, and they gave it to Heather, and that yeah, that and then I did another series for her. The, um, okay. Speaking of, I mean, not speaking of, but I know we had talked about it earlier uh, with Peter Melman. I just was curious because I saw you were in, he had a short lived show as well. The, um, like you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I don't think I ever, I don't remember it being out. I guess it didn't, you know, it might not have made it past the first season, but I was curious. I mean, assuming, was that just from the Seinfeld connection too, uh, as far as that? Why not, you know, so you got Seinfeld three episodes. Melman show and a curb out of out of just that one Seinfeld appearance, right? I mean, was there anything about that Melman show that that you can tell us about that maybe people don't know? Because I think that show, you know, it must have been highly the guy, the main guy from Seinfeld to, to create it, and then it just didn't make it. I'm just curious, well, maybe it what funny, happened. It was a weird concept. Obviously, yeah, if it's him, it's right, probably a little bit. Jennifer, right, and you had to you had to get that joke to begin with. Right. What so was the joke you have to get to begin with? I'm sorry, I might have talked to her. Yeah, you know, Jennifer had plastic surgery and then nobody recognized her anymore. She thought... Oh, right. Right? Yes, and, yes. You know, even her own agent didn't right. recognize her anymore, right? They were like... It's kind of ahead of its time, if you think about it. Like, that well, would be... Peter, yeah, though. it's true, you know, yeah. Peter takes these really sort of odd things and makes, you know, make them funnier. Um, and... The cast was great. They were just a, you know, really nice. I can't remember the one guy's name. He ended up on Sex and the City. Um, but it was, yeah, I think it lasted one season. I was pregnant and I wasn't telling anyone I was pregnant. So when Peter called me and said, hey, I want you to do this episode, I was like, sure. And then Wardrobe called. It was going to be like in three weeks or four weeks. And they said, what's your size? And I thought, oh, no. <laughs> My size is going to be different in four weeks. Right, right. Um, so I was pregnant on the show. Uh, nobody knew. And uh, it was funny. It was well written. It was, a, I think I, I was a lawyer and I had, I made a legal agreement to have sex with one of the characters in no strings attached contract. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great storyline. That that's definitely sounds like it could be a Melbourne storyline. Yeah. And, and it's funny because, you know, people always thought of me as a dramatic actress initially in my career coming mm. off the daytime and when you're pigeonholed like that you get few opportunities to really get into com the comedy side of the business and i had done um uh oh my evening shade and then i did a blossom or something like that you know and right. people were like well she was the straight person, you know, whatever. And then, it, you know, when I did Seinfeld, I did, you know, I did more comedy after that. So. And you did a Matlock. I always like to throw in Matlock. I did a Matlock. I did. Let me ask, what, like, did they all pay the same, like, in 94 for, like, a one stint, like, Matlock, yeah. Blossom, Seinfeld, based yeah. on the ratings? Is it different now? Yeah, it, it depends on, so, for example, Matlock, that was actually supposed to be a pilot for a new show. Um, huh. That was like a spinoff or something. It was going to be Leah Delaria's show. It's supposed to call, be called I Pat Coletti. Huh. Leah Delaria ended up on Orange Is the New Black, um, and but that was really when they were trying to find her a vehicle because she was a very popular comedian at the time, and so they were doing a pilot. With it was going to be a spin off pilot from Matlock called I Pat Coletti, and so I was hired. I was supposed to be the new character on Matlock, but Andy thought I was too sexy. <laughs> so, yeah, Matlock for, for a Matlock episode. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> so, so, you're, like Ke you're like, what you're like, Kevin, ba you're like Kevin Bacon, like, honestly, all the connections you have, I, like, that are coming out from like. 
Meg Ryan, Marissa Tomei, Larry David. It's 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 really unbelievable that you've and you mentioned it, like those three outlets, right? Like Daytime, Seinfeld, and Star Trek were like. Do you let me ask you this? Do you do you miss it if if Larry David called tomorrow and said, "Hey, I want you to be on an episode of Curb." Would you do it? Yeah, I would do episodes. Yeah, I I don't know that I would contract. Uh, you know, that was something that I struggled with with my agents. Once I left As the World Turns, it was very hard. If you'll notice, uh, I never did uh, a series regular role because I had told my agents I want to do 12 episode chunks at a time because I liked creating. You know, if I had to do the same show, I know everybody thinks that the big payday is when you get a series. But for me, I actually wanted to create. So I learned from being on daytime for almost five years, um, you really are doing the same thing every day. And so mm -hmm. what I would do is I would take these 12 episode arcs, which nowadays would be a whole series, <laughs> right? Right, right. <laughs> with the limited series now. So I would take these arcs and then I would say, do I want to do more? Do I want to stay in that character? And like I said, I I, I thought of myself more of an artist than Ness, because I also sing and I was a dancer for most of my life and I write. Um, and so I always thought of myself more uh, an artist than just, you know, not just an actor, but only acting. And And I liked having that freedom to make those decisions. So I would sign deals for six, 12, things like that. And, and then when it, cause you know, you get locked in seven years if you're a contract player and, mm. and that's the end of that. So, um, but your question, Chris, about, you know, pay is dependent on, you know, what the role is, who you are, what your quote is. Um, you know, you could get paid if you really wanted to do something. You know, I did a lot of films for a man called Paul Leader, who I, may he rest in peace, just a wonderful guy. And I love his family, Mimi and Geraldine Leader and Ruben Leader and Etil, the mother. They were just like second family to me. Um, you know, it, it, it depended on what the job was, what, if it was independent, what the financing was. Sometimes it got back end. Hmm. Um, you know, I did a lot of work where I got a back end of the project. Um, and then, you know, if you had a quote, you had a quote. Back in the day, if yeah. you had a quote, you had a quote. I just wanted to make sure Matlock wasn't stiffing you. But here's the good news: you're you're you're, you're still <laughs> you're still getting residuals from Seinfeld. I hope. That's right. Uh, so I got some. And, uh, nice, nice. So and and Melanie, you're um, the website's well lit life, right? It is the well lit life. My new website is launching in about two months, and it will be called Work with Melanie Smith. And then I'm also um, uh, in the process of finishing my book. So. Oh, very cool. Right. We'll have you back on if you want when you. Uh, oh, I'd love ready that. To promote that, yeah, yeah. Very uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, you go to Well Lit Life, and uh, that URL will take you to the new site when it's ready. But you can go to the site that's up right now. Yeah, and see. Awesome. Well, Melanie, this was such a this was a treat. Thank you so uh, much, Melanie. Oh, thank you. Glad things glad things are going so well. Good luck in Naples. Congratulations to your son. And just thanks for all the laughs throughout the years. Yeah, this was uh, well, a blast. Thank thanks, you. For, thanks for watching and thank you for having me. And um, keep up the good work. <laughs> keep it in these times in particular. So thank you. Thank you, Mel. Have thank a great you. night. Really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Have a great time. Thanks, Mel.